All right, welcome back to another episode of Making Sales Social Live. Today, we're going to be talking about the five mistakes that social sellers are making on LinkedIn. Welcome to Making Sales Social Live, as we share LinkedIn and social selling training, strategies, and tips that will have an immediate impact on your business. Join Bill McCormick, Bryn Tillman, and me, Bob Woods, every week. Making Sales Social Live. This is the recorded version of our weekly Making Sales Social Live show. So number one is having their profile set up as a resume. Number two is the dreaded connect and pitch. Three is connect and forget. Four is post and ghost. And then mm -hmm. by rounding out our quintuplets, random acts of social. That's right. <laughs> Let's start talking about uh, profile set up as a resume rather than how should it be set up? Yeah. So, you know, most people on LinkedIn have their profile set up a, and as a resume. For most people, that's fine because they're looking for jobs. They're, they're looking to further advance their careers. For us as social sellers, though, we need to have it set up in a way that attracts, teaches, and engages for a couple of different reasons. Number one, it supports your efforts when you go out to, um, to comment and to post and to do all that, because they're going to want to click through to your profile. And if they <laughs> click through to your profile and they see just a resume, not only does it not support everything else that you're doing to try to build yourself up as a thought leader, it looks like you're looking for a job. You know, you, you really have to build your resume so that, or I mean, I was your profile so that it's not a resume and it does attract people in when they click through from your content, or even if they just land on your profile from a, a LinkedIn search or a Google search or whatever, then it needs to teach them about what you do and get them thinking differently about the services that or the product that, that you're providing. And then it needs to have them easily engage with you, whether it's through a connection or whether it's through a phone call or whether it's through an email or even a, a calendar scheduling type of function that you can put a link into there. So always remember that that when you're on LinkedIn, you're not a job searcher. You are a social seller. And just in case you want to save your current um, LinkedIn profile, you can actually do that just before you start to make changes. Click on more and then click save as PDF. So, you know, God forbid you have to look for another job. You'll actually have a copy of it in front of you. So you don't have to start recreating the wheel. You could just re-enter things in as well. So you don't even have to lose anything when you go from a uh, a resume to a resource as as we teach it here. Excellent. I'm going to add. So, so, I, so I love this. So Bob hit on all these key pieces and I, I'm going to just kind of, bring together uh, a little bit that he talked about, which really is the five things that our profile needs to do. It needs to resonate with our buyer, right? So they show up and go, this person works with me, works with people like me. This is like my, one, uh, my peeps, right? The second thing it needs to do is create curiosity. They work with me and am I interested in continuing to read, right? Have they sucked me in? Is there something here? Just like with content, right? At your first impression, is this a piece of content I want to open and read? We need to do that at our, our profile. So the third thing is we need to teach them something new. So one of the mistakes we make as a social seller, we want to tell them what we want to tell them. But what we really need to do is provide insights and be a resource and get them to say, man, this is good. Then Bob hit on a point that I think was absolutely vital, which is we have to get them thinking differently about their current situation. If we're going to sell to them, we're competing with status quo almost every single time. So if we can teach them something new that gets them thinking differently about how they're doing business today, that will lead to our solution and a compelling moment. As Bob said, make sure it's easy for them to reach out and connect with you, whether it's a calendar link some kind of call to action so that you can convert these connections into conversation. And I'll just add, think about this in terms of the, of the real networking world. And 
when you went to networking events and if you're still able to do that, that's great. You go, you, you put your best foot forward, right? You don't show up in corn jeans and the, the clothes that you did the, the, the yard work with uh, yesterday, unless of course you're doing landscaping services, right? You come dressed professionally. Think of your, your, your profile the same way as you want to put your best foot forward because everything you do on LinkedIn, all roads lead back to your profile. People mm -hmm. are going to go back and look at that. And, you know, somebody reaches out to me and they don't have a profile picture or they have their settings set to only show their profile picture to first degree connection. So I can't see what they look like, or, you know, there's nothing on their profile. It makes me kind of scratch my head and go, why would I want to connect with this person, let alone have any further conversation with them. So mm -hmm. you know, great points uh, about profile, making sure that it's value centering and we transform it from that resume to a resource. Resume is all about you. Resource means it's all about your ideal client prospect. Next mm -hmm. is the dreaded connect and pitch. What do we say, Bryn? Yeah. Connect and pitch is it's a, a bait, and, bait switch. and switch. So here's the thing, as salespeople, our focus is on hitting our numbers. Our focus is on making a sale. Our focus is in converting them into a client. But social selling isn't about our focus. Social selling is about being a resource, providing value, building trust and relationships, knowing that the sale will come when the time is right. That's what really good social selling is. Mm -hmm. When you connect and pitch, which is a bait and switch, you're social spamming, just what it is. There's no social selling. There's no social anything, actually. It's just spam. But if you're doing that today, it's probably because you got bad guidance or you just don't know any better. So it's up to us to share with you that you need to slow down your outreach to speed up the outcome. You need to build rapport. You need to bring value. You need to earn the right to get that conversation. When our prospects say to us, and they say it all the time, I don't, I don't think LinkedIn works for me. I reach out to people. I tell them what I do. And, you know, they don't want to take my call. Well, because you haven't earned the right. Because all you did was tell them how you can help them. Instead of telling them how you can help them, actually help them. And you'll start to earn the right. When we just connect and pitch, no matter how valuable our offer is, our product or service, no matter how much money it costs, it can be, it can be a, a solution that's a million dollar sale. No matter what, when you connect and pitch, you reduce your offer to a commodity. Mm. And, and so, so think about that. If you connect and pitch with someone, they buy from you right away. What separated you? What you just happened to hit the right person at the right time. And that doesn't happen very often, but guess what? you then have to really deliver on that by by transforming and, and working on it in such a way where we slow down our outreach to speed up our outcome and developing relationships we then have the opportunity to develop credibility mm -hmm. and credibility mm -hmm. is really the, the currency that we need to deal in you know trust is at an all-time low and so what we need to do is, is establish that credibility so that when folks need our services, then we're the ones they think of. Number three is connect and forget. Oh, big one. Lynn, hi, Lynn, says instead of telling, oh, yep, tell, telling how you can help them, actually help them. That's Thank it, yes. Lynn. We tend to connect with people. We find someone and, and they're maybe our ideal prospect or they're a networking partner that we know we can, and we connect with them authentically. We reach out mm -hmm. to them, say, hey, Bob, was checking out your profile and I saw that your post around XYZ. I thought it was really great. Um, it'd be great to be part of your network. Take a look at my profile and you think it's a good idea. Let's connect. Bob connects back and then that's it. I completely forget about Bob. Mm -hmm. I ignore Bob. Where is Bob? Wasn't that a movie? Um, and so what we, about Bob? What, what about, about Bob? Bob? What about Bob? What about Bob? What now? So we, we connect and then we completely forget about them. And here's here's a little test you can put yourself through. Over the next few days, when the birthday announcements on LinkedIn show up on your notifications and it says it lists the Bryn and seven other people have a birthday today. Bryn's birthday's in June, it's not today, but Go through and look at that list and, and 
think about, look and say, how many do I know? How many have I had a conversation with, with recently? How many can I trace back and say, oh yeah, I know I met that person there. You'll be surprised. You'll be like, so the great thing you can do is you can actually start, you can actually export your connections, mm -hmm. take inventory, to, take inventory of them and, and go through and figure out, okay, and identify them and give CPR to your current network, the people you're currently connected with, breathe the life back to them. All right. And the way we, we say CPR is identify who are your clients, P. who are your prospects, P. And, P, P, and then R, who are your yeah. referral partners. And yep. now go moving forward, every time you connect with someone, make sure you're sending a welcome message and make sure you're furthering the conversation along mm -hmm. so you don't connect and forget. So when Bob's birthday comes up, you go, oh, yeah, I know, Bob. We talked last week. The most basic problem is, is that people just don't know how to do it. I mean, people do have good intentions. I, I think a vast majority of people don't intend to blow people off. It's just, you know, you get to that what what do I do now type of thing. And most people just don't know what to do. And that's why you, you need to have plans. So don't connect and forget. Right. Yeah. Have a reason, one. right? Why did I connect <laughs> with this person in the first place? Mm -hmm. What value can I bring to them? And some of that is around social listening. Some mm -hmm. of that is about looking through their profile and looking at content that they've shared or they've mm -hmm. engaged on. How do you start a conversation with them? Treat the person on the other side of the message the same way you would if they were on the other side of the table. So it's so simple to start a conversation in person, but when we're on social or digital, we get like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. Spend the time to learn about that person and what matters to them. So Ivan, well, is super, uh, is super hard to tell your sales reps to invest time in social selling, how to turn social selling into a must in daily sales work. Salespeople are tired of investing more or they are lacking skills to communicate in and out of the box way. So ultimately is how do you get buy-in from those reps? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and a lot of them have been trying LinkedIn, as I mentioned, and they're like, yeah, mm -hmm. it's not working for me because you're doing it in a way that doesn't work. Right? right? We can't look at this as a cold calling tool. It's about building connections that lead to relationships and so on. You're either spam or add value. Love that. That's true. Rob, uh, isn't it time to start deleting people so we can spend more time with quality people? Less is more. So it's interesting. I don't think we should go in and just totally clean up and delete our, our connections, but we do believe in focusing on the ones that really matter, which is why Bill talked about conducting CPR. Right. right. And, and moving forward, being a true networker so that when someone sends you a connection request, you know, you're the gatekeeper of your network. So make sure you're evaluating that connection request. And if they don't send you a message, send them a message back that says, Hey, Bob, thanks for your invitation to connect. Typically, I only connect with people I've either met or had a Zoom meeting with or have had engagement here on LinkedIn. Can you tell me how you found me and what triggered the connection request? Boom. It's like a tennis game. I hit the ball back in Bob's court. Now Bob's going to come back and say, oh, well, and just today this happened. And somebody said, oh, I'm, I'm the unofficial president of the Bryn Tillman fan club on Clubhouse. And we've had many conversations. And she tagged you on a post recently. Was his name oh, Roy? Uh, I, I think so. Roy. It, I, I'd love to be a part of your network. Great. I, I, I let him up in. Other people, when I send that, come back and say, oh, well, we help companies just like you with X, Y, Z. They're pitching. And yeah, so then yeah. we have a little go back and forth. Or for some people, I don't even hear back from. But so you really want to start evaluating your network so that from moving on from this point forward, you are mm -hmm. adding quality connections. And listen, if somebody spams you and you send a message back and, and it gets, you can delete them. You can get rid of them if you have to. I agree with Brent. You know, we're, we take the networking aspect of, of LinkedIn. You know, there are lions, uh, LinkedIn open networkers. They'll connect with anybody. They have a high quantity of connections, but a low mm -hmm. quality in their network. Mm -hmm. Then there's purists that only connect with people in their industry or that they've totally met in person and know, or within a certain geographical area, they typically have a low quantity of connections, mm -hmm. but a real high quality in their network. Mm -hmm. But what we take is kind of that networking idea because you never know who you connect with that's following you and that's kind of lurking mm -hmm. and watching what you're doing and six months down the road a year down the road they come back they 
they contact you and say, hey, you know, we're interested. Last week, we had a, a company reach out. They've been following Bryn for two years and uh, a, a fairly large deal that's on the table now just because they finally felt comfortable enough to, to, to reach out. So there's another way for we forget. We connect and forget, and then we, we, we post and ghost. We post, and then we forget any engagement at all. And we're coming up to Halloween now. So it's that time of year <laughs> that we don't want to post, post and ghost. So talk about that for a minute. So we'll what that means essentially is getting a post out there and then you start seeing likes and comments and things like that and you don't do anything with them. So, I mean, it's literally ghosting that comment and you don't want to do that because sometimes you may know, sometimes you may not know who is, who is posting or, or who is, um, either commenting or liking or whatever. And you really want to try to engage with these people with the eventual goal of if, the, if it makes sense for you to connect with them. If you ghost, you that's you've lost a prime opportunity, especially because they showed enough interest in your post mm -hmm. and they took the time to actually either, you know, even just a like that takes a little bit of time or comment definitely takes more time. So it's rude for lack of a better that's word true. To, to post and ghost. And you're losing Losing out on all kinds of potential opportunities. The challenge, I've I've engaged on people's content, and mm -hmm. when they don't comment back or even like it, the next time they post something, I don't do it. Right. Yeah. Right. And so, part of doing it well is building a loyal fan base of people that are connecting and engaging with you. Um, when they like and comment on it, it goes to their news feed, so you get exposed to their network. You remember when we talked about social selling, it's about adding value and being a resource mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. building trust and relationships. If you are no, if you don't engage back, there's no relationship to be had. Mm -hmm. It's like someone walked up to you in a networking meeting and said, Hey, nice suit. And you turned around and walked away. It's just rude. And and that person will not come up to you the next time and, and comment you about right. this. They'll probably stay away from you. And, and, and it's the same, it's the same socially. So it's important that you're putting content out there. Listen, I, I think the stat is somewhere around 3% of active LinkedIn users post content just once, once a week. So by posting, great job, you're putting yourself in that 97 percentile of active LinkedIn users, but you're just not throwing it out to the universe and then just turning and walking away. You want to post it because as Bryn said, you want to provide value. And so you want to encourage conversation. First of all, it's going to help build your credibility and your thought leadership. Second of all, it's going to help with the algorithm without getting into tons of detail with that. It will help that go further. But then the third thing is it's just being a good human. When somebody says something, you want to comment back. So don't post and ghost. Last thing, random acts of social. Mm. So you know, we go on every once in a while. And, and I think maybe to, to Ivan's point a little bit with the earlier question is many salespeople, you know, we're busy. We have busy lives. And so we tend to only hop in here once in a while and do a little bit here. And then we get that idea of, well, LinkedIn doesn't, doesn't work for me. I posted something two weeks ago and it got 25 views. And then I just posted something today, two weeks later, and only got five views. And uh, LinkedIn, LinkedIn doesn't, doesn't work. It will work if we have a system, if we're consistent mm -hmm. with our use. Yeah. James Clear in his book, Atomic Habits, says we don't rise to the level of our goals. We fall to the level of our systems. So we have to have a system in place for, for utilizing LinkedIn. Yeah. And, and yeah. I want to say, Bryn, talk about cadence for, for a little bit. So cadence or workflow. Like, what are we going to do? When you do random acts of social, as Bill said, we come on, we like something, we accept someone's connection request. Maybe we ask someone to connect and then we pop off and there's no follow-up. There's no consistency. When they accept our connection request, we ignore them. So we want to make sure that we have a workflow or a cadence. And a big piece of what we're training in our new course that's coming up is wrapped in this idea that we want to be extremely purposeful and thoughtful. And although there may be more steps in our outreach than a typical cold call, because there are, mm -hmm. you know, maybe seven or eight steps before we ever even get on a conversation with someone, it's purposeful. We've made them feel like they matter. Mm -hmm. We've engaged appropriately, even asked their point of view on a poll or on a post 
so that, you know, asking their opinion that we're listening to them, that they matter before we ever even try to get on a conversation, a call with them. So random acts of social will never, almost never convert. Thanks, Jonathan. Uh, says, it seems to me that people post content, but when they don't get a lot of engagement, they get discouraged. The mindset should not should be not to post for the masses, but to add value to the one person only. I love this. By adding value to one, you'll naturally reach more people over time. Brilliant. So we do talk about, though. Yeah, we yeah. Like one to many, yep. right? one to few, and yep. one to one. So if you post something, it's not getting a lot of play. Think about who would get value from this and get it into their inbox, mm -hmm. right? So I go, ooh, yep. Bob Woods would really get value from this mm -hmm. post. I click the little send button and I type Bob Woods and, hey, Bob, recently posted a link to this Forbes article, um, you know, ABC as a CMO. I thought you might get some value from it. I'd love to hear your thoughts in comments. Mm -hmm. I'd love yeah. to hear your thoughts in comments, right? Yeah. And I get it into 20, 30 people and all of a sudden... I'm getting engagement. And by the way, the first hour, and now it's a, they're saying two hours. Yeah. And I think just from an overall broader perspective for, for the people who, who don't wonder why, you know, who are wondering why they're not getting engagement, you know, um, there are influencers on LinkedIn whose job it is to engage with as many people as, as possible and attract as many eyeballs as possible. That's because their audience is broad. I mean, it's supposed to be everybody. By definition, whatever uh, your salespeople are doing and what salespeople are, are doing, they're already looking at a subset and, and an extreme subset of that population because they should have a defined audience of who they're going after. So just thinking of it like that, they're not going to get those huge numbers that everybody wants and everybody, you know, takes it as an ego stroke and everything like that. What you're ultimately looking for is the likes and the comments and things like that so that you can start engaging with people. You don't need a ton of views. What you really need are the likes and the comments to start to ultimately start conversations with. Or even just, just simply leveraging it in the inbox to start. Yes, and that too. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and so the, there, there are those who are selling training on LinkedIn that's all about content and putting content out and getting engagement rates up. And, and that's really the real long game of LinkedIn. Bryn's been on LinkedIn a long time. She has um, 60 some thousand followers, I believe, or something like that in that range. So when Bryn, and, and everything's relative. So when Bryn puts a post out and it only gets 2,500 views in the first two hours, for Bryn, that's kind of on the low side. It is low. Right? For me, that's going to be like, that's good post. That's mm -hmm. good for yep. the average sales rep. They're going to be like, that's really great. Right. So, so it's all relative, but posting yeah. content and, and getting engagement on that content and leveraging that into a sale is the long game on LinkedIn. Yep. The medium game is what Bryn talked about. The, the one to few is where you're taking that same content and you're putting it into someone's inbox. Not so much in there. You're, you're offering it to them. Hey, Bob, as a CEO in the XYZ industry, I have some resources for you along this. Let me know and I'll send you a link. That's the yep. that's the the medium game. There's a short game on LinkedIn that, and this is probably the sixth, the sixth mistake that that sales social people social sales reps aren't using on LinkedIn is actually leveraging it for referrals mm -hmm. because it's a huge Rolodex. Bryn, tell your Rolodex story. The, the Rolodex story ultimately is LinkedIn allows us to filter and search our connections, connections, and get referrals and permission to name drop, which will be another episode. Yes. Yeah. We're excited to talk about that. Guys, yeah. this was great. Quickly, five mistakes people are making. Profile is a resume and not a resource. Connect and pitch, connect and forget, post and ghost, and random access social. And the six is not using the referrals on, on LinkedIn. Hey, it was great being with you. Thank you. Thank you. Great, great interaction. We'll see you next well, time. Don't miss an episode. Visit socialsaleslink.com slash podcast. Leave a review down below. Tell us what you think, what you learned, and what you want to hear from us next. Register for free resources at linkedinlibrary.com. You can also listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and Google Play. Visit our website, socialsaleslink.com, for more information.